Hi there, everybody. So this week, you're going to get a chance to show us what you've learned about rasters. You've already had an introductory raster lab where you use the explore tool to pull values from specific rasters. You're going to get to do that again this week. And then last week, working with the Mars data, you um, used zonal statistics as a table to summarize rasters within certain zones. And you're going to do that again this week as well. So you'll see on the assignment page, we've got instructions for you. Uh, data to download, a table because we're going to have you um, uh, make some calculations and you can just download this table and use it as a template and that'll uh, save you some time hopefully having to format that professionally and then uh, uh, your typical answer form here. Make sure you pay attention to these notes and the rubric. Uh, there's important stuff in here. Um, looking at the instructions, um, just so you know, again, I put at the top um, kind of the setup for the lab. Um, I describe the data for you and tell you where I got it. Okay, so your data sources are here and descriptions, and I'll walk through that in a second. The setup is Schofield Reservoir is down in Carbon County, and it's the primary drinking source for a lot of people. Three quarters of the county relies on Schofield Reservoir. If a wildfire were to burn through here, um, the contributing watersheds would be heavily impacted, right? And you could have a big sediment dump. And um, so often what hydrologists do is study things like the characteristics of watersheds contributing to reservoirs. Um, and so what you're gonna do is help summarize some of the individual characteristics of these watersheds. Things like, you know, the average slope for each of the three watersheds or, you know, the change in elevation or, um, um, aspect maybe could be a, a big influence in the wintertime where you've got snowpack uh, more heavily, you know, um, aspect would affect snowpack is what I'm getting at. Okay, so uh, basic steps, but not a lot of detail. This is a challenge. We want you guys to think through this and demonstrate what you've learned in the last couple of labs. You're going to calculate slope and run zonal statistics. Here's an example of the table that we give you. Make sure you round the values and include units. And let us know if you're calculating planar or geodesically. That's going to be really important. Um, you're going to calculate hillshade, which you've done before. A new one is aspect. Aspect is the direction that the slope is facing. It's important to know that you calculate aspect from elevations, not slope. So if you put slope in to calculate aspect, you'll get some really funky results. So don't do that. All right, and then as usual, a set of questions asking about values, asking about coordinate systems or spatial references, resolution, um, those things that you've been asked before. You'll be submitting that table back to us with, like I said, rounded values and units, and then the answer form to answer the questions in the lab. Okay, so let's pop over and take a look at the data really quick. I've brought in the um, watershed data, and there's a uh, point location that you're going to use to extract information at that exact point. Make sure you zoom in so you're getting the correct cell. Um, what I've done here is just instead of a single symbol, I've applied unique symbology based on the name of the watershed. And then I've brought in the elevation data. Now look at the, at the name of this, N40W112, 10 meter CL. This is a bunch of jargon, right? Um, this has to do with the tile that this elevation data belongs to. It's how you download elevation data. Um, I could have changed this to something nice and clean for you. I could, could have called it a DEM, for example, but you need to get used to seeing stuff like this and tracking what it is. It says in the instructions exactly what this is, so pay attention to that. Range of values. So let's add the other piece of data that you need because it's not exactly straightforward. Um, here is the watershed, the point, and this is the elevation data. Inside this folder, is the land cover data that you need. So here's a DBF file. This won't add, this will add to ARC, but it's just a standalone table. This is a text file describing some of the parameters. This thing is the raster data set you need. So look at the file type. If this is confusing, that should help. Metadata shape file isn't gonna help you. We're working with rasters. This is the um, existing vegetation type data set. I usually single click to add rasters because sometimes they get a little messed up. Okay, so you can see our three different data sets have completely different extents. That's very normal. And the elevation data comes in 
with a stretched color ramp and a range of values from 3001 to 3968. What, what does that have to do with vegetation, do you think? Well, the easiest way to figure that out is to look in the attribute table, and we can because they're integers, right? So raster, table setup, value, and count, just like a histogram or a frequency distribution. Um, this is how you know. It's one way that you can tell that it's a raster is it has a value and a count. But this one has extra information in it, and it's because um, this is categorical data. These aren't measures of anything. They're a key or a legend. So 3001 actually equals intermountain basins, sparsely vegetated systems. Hey, what do you know about that? 3006 equals Rocky Mountain Alpine, Montane, sparsely vegetated systems. So there's no rank to these values. They're not continuous values that have rank or order to them. Great Basin, Pinion, Juniper, Woodland isn't more than Intermountain Basin's sparsely vegetated systems, is it? It's just different. So these are categorical numbers. Why is that so important? Because when you run zonal statistics and you take a mean of these values, that's nonsense. You can't take a mean of these values. I mean, if you averaged 3,000 and 3,500, is that, are you gonna get a mix between, for example, Rocky Mountain Alpine Dwarf Shrubland and Rocky Mountain Alp? No, of course not. So these are categories, you can't average them. You can, it would be really silly. So same with um, maximum. The maximum is just going to be, when I'm talking about running zonal statistics, the maximum value is just gonna equal Western cool temperate wheat. That doesn't mean it's the most, right? It's just the highest categorical number. So really think about your zonal statistics. One of the questions that we ask you is, what's the most common land cover type in your watersheds? That's not going to be the highest number. It's the most common number. All right, I gave away too much, but we haven't worked with categorical raster data before, so I hope that helps. Uh, if you scroll over in the attribute table, you'll see that there's just different um, kind of levels of description. Um, some of them are very specific. Some of them are very um, generic. You know, developed roads, developed agricultural, etc. So there's some interesting stuff in here, um, but that's the most important thing is that the value is the cell value, but it's a code that represents something categorical. Elevation very different. These are measures. They're continuous values that are rankable. You can have high slope and low slope. So you could take an average slope for a watershed. I mean, sorry, average elevation for a watershed, watershed, not slope. But you see what I'm getting at, right? Okay. Um, that's it. I'm going to drop it there. If you have any questions, let us know. But remember, this is a challenge and we want to see what you guys have learned. We want to see what you know. So have fun and talk to you later.